You have probably known about Blender, the all-in-one software. It does VFX, drawing, video editing, coding, you name it. But the best thing that Blender can do is 3D. Blender excels at photorealistic rendering, capturing every reflection, bumps, scratches with perfection. Although sometimes we don't want to replicate reality entirely. Now take a gander at these scenes. They are made in 3D, but how? All the line arts, the colors, and the effects just make them look like 2D illustrations. It just looks very hard to do in 3D. Back then, I have no idea how these scenes were created. But today, I want to challenge myself to recreate this illustration in 3D. More specifically, I want to figure out how to recreate those breathtaking brush strokes that just make you question reality. It just looks perfect in its own way. So I think you all know the most important step by now. Let's start off by deleting this cube and add a different cube by pressing Shift A, Mesh and Cube. People have been asking me a lot why I do this. It's um, it's it's because um. Anyways, let's dive into the geometry node. Here I will click New, and we should be able to do the magic. First, I would add a distribution points on faces node. This will distribute points on top of our cube. And next, I will add an instance on points node. This will replace the points with an instance, but because we don't have an instance object yet, the whole thing just disappear. So I search for grid and plug the mesh into the instance. Now you can see a lot of grid or planes in your viewport. As you can see, it's too big, so I reduce the size a little bit. Right now, the planes are not facing the camera, so we have to add something to the rotation. I will add an object info node. This will allow us to get information about all the objects in the scene. And I want to get the location of our camera, so I select the camera from this drop down and choose relative. Next, I will add a position node and grab two more nodes, which are vector math and align our little vector. Set the vector math to subtract. Let's connect them up. Set the align all to vector to C axis and then plug the rotation. And there we go! All the planes are facing the camera now. Now let's add a joint geometry node and plug in the original cube and the planes together. Now I see that some planes are clipping through the cube, so I want to move them forward to the camera by adding this translate instances node just after the instance on point node. And I will drag the C down a little bit. See, it's moving towards the camera. Then let's add a set material node so that we can add material to the planes later. Let's add a store name attribute node so that we can store some information of our geometry allowing us to use them later in the shader. Put one of them here and set the name to UV map. Change the type to vector and plug in the UV map of the grid into the node. Drag the other one and put it just after the translate instance node. Set the name to normal, select vector, change from point to instance, and plug in the normal back from the distance points on face node to this node. Then let's add a self object node and an object info node. Plug in the self object and the object info together and grab another node called Vector Rotate. We want to rotate the normal by the rotation of our self object. Change the type to Alder and put it just before we store the normal. And plug in the rotation of the self object into the rotation of the Vector Rotate node. And there you go! Just a few nodes, some camera tricks, and voila! You've got a forest of planes that will make even an airline jealous. Now let's talk about shader. First, you will need a brush texture. Forget about buying an actual brush and paint. You can do it, but we are in the digital age, my friends. So what I would do is casually... Yeah! Save that masterpiece as a transparent PNG, and then we can use it later. Now back in Blender, click on Material Properties, click New Material, name it, and in Geometry node, set the material to the one you just created. 
In the shader editor, we can add two attribute nodes. Set the name to UV map and normal. Add an image texture node and find the brush texture that we just created. Then plug UV map vector output into the image texture. Now we will see our brush texture on our planes when we view the alpha of the image. Now add the mix node and set the first input to 1. Plug the alpha of the image into the B input and set the normal attribute type to in sensor. Plug the alpha into the factor and plug the result of the mix node into the principal BSDF. Then plug the BSDF into the material output. After that, we have to change the blend mode to alpha hash and the shadow mode to alpha clip. And then let's see the result. Oh, wait. Um. Oh, right. We rotated our plane, so now the normal is facing the wrong way. And I think I know exactly how to fix it. You might remember that we used the store name attribute node to store the correct normal in the geometry node. That's right. We will fix the normal with some shader magic. So we need to correct them with a setup like this. And let's see the result. Then, plug the result into the normal of the principal BSDF. Now let's get rid of the brush shadow by adding a math node, setting it to multiply, and add a light path node. Connect them like this. Plug the BSDF of the principal shader into the material output. And there you go! Let's go back to geometry node to turn up the density of the brush a little bit so there is more brush strokes. And there it is, Paintery Cube. But hold on, we are not done just yet. You see, when I press N on the viewport and lock the camera to view and move the camera, the brush seems to rotate in an unpredictable way. And the color seems a little bit flat, doesn't it? I want to add some randomness into the color and make this even more painterly. So let's first fix the rotation. Grab a combine XYZ and align all the to vector, a vector math, and vector rotate. We will set the Y to 1. Plug the vector into the vector of the vector rotate. Change the type to other and plug the location of the camera to the vector rotate. Now change the vector math node to cross product. Then plug the output of the subtract node into the cross product. Plug the vector rotate into the cross product. Put the new align order to vector node in between the rotation output and the rotation input of the instance on points node. Then plug the output of the cross product node into the input of the align order to vector. After that, we can add a rotate order node. Set it to local. Then we can put in any custom rotation we want. Then let's do the randomization. Duplicate this store name attribute node for the normals and change the name to random. Add a random value node and set the mode to vector. Set the minimum to negative 1 on the XYZ. Then plug the value into the store attribute node. Now jump back to the shader. Let's randomize the brush color. I will add a hue saturation color and a separate color node. Then duplicate the normal attribute node. Change the name to random. Be sure that the type is set to instancer and plug the color into the separate color node. Now you see that each color gives us a random negative 1 to 1 value. But we need to analyze how the hue saturation value node works first. So this value, 0.5 for the hue, 1 for the saturation, and another one for the value is the default values for this node. Which means that right now, the node does not do anything to our selected color. But the more we deviate from these values, the more the output color changes. So I will add 3 math nodes and set them all to multiply add. Plug the red into the first one, and then into the hue of the hue saturation value node. Now this multiplier acts as the factor for how much we want to change the color of our brushes. Then do the same with green and blue, and connect them to saturation and value. Be sure to set the added of the green and blue to 1, because remember, the initial value of saturation and value is 1. And then we got the slider for this input too. Then look at that, now we got color randomization for our brushes. 
And you know what? I think I can use the tune shader I made in my previous video. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. I will import it and I will replace the principal BSDF with the tune shader. Plug just the normal for now and then we can plug the result of our tune shader into the color input of our hue saturation value. Now our tune shader does not have an alpha input, so we have to implement that ourselves. Grab a transparent node and a mixed shader node, then plug the node like this. Then plug the alpha into the factor of our mixed shader. Also, make sure to set the world color to black. And change the real transform to standard. And there you go! That is a painterly cube. Then the last thing that we need to do is to edit the geometry node a little bit, so it will be easier to use in the future. I will duplicate the group input, plug the sizes and the density. I will duplicate it again and plug in the custom rotation. And duplicate it again and plug in the material. Rename this to Paintery Brush. And there you go! Now I can add other objects. Go to Modifiers, select Geometry Node, and select the Paintery Brush from the drop down. Adjust some parameters. Create a new material. Make sure to select that new material in the modifiers too and copy and paste the same shader setup earlier into the new material. And do this a couple of times. And here is the final outcome of the study. And there you go! That was a long journey, but look at our creation! We have created a new geometry node setup ready to be used in any scene we want. Alright everyone, I think we have reached the end of this episode. Non-photorealistic rendering is a vast universe with endless possibilities. I hope that the stuff in this video was useful for you guys to start your own journey. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you you guys so much for watching. Until next time, stay positive and happy blending.